So now we're just going to walk through the grazeway gate with the Burks. Uh, we're talking about grazing, uh, farm roadways and milking permissions. Now we're coming to the uh, Diamond uh, ABC yard. Yep. So, so we've got roads in three different directions here. We've got a, an entrance in here. We've got a, an exit gate. Then we've got another road with an entrance and an exit gate. And then, then the last pin, then again, we've one more road with an entrance and that exit gate there as well. Correct, yeah. So all the cows are coming out here. Um, this is uh, one option that we have. We can put two uh, gates on the ABC grazing panel system. So it gives us a bit more control over what cows are doing, they can, where they're coming from, and if they have permission uh, to the robot. So it can, it can add a little bit of um, extra control and actually it'll allow you to milk more cows uh, off gra an ABC grazing system. So you don't have the yard filling up with cows that don't have milking permission, they're kept Correct. outside. Now, and as it's there as an option, you can have it with the one gate as well, yeah. we'll do ABC off, so it's just a personal preference of, a, of, of the farm. Okay. So and um, say now if a farmer was uh, buffer feeding or TMR, um, like a lot of gates will operate on the sense of uh, milking permission on a time base, but uh, the Delval system can also draft cows in based on their potential milk yield yes. or whether they are high yielders and they deserve the TMR or yep. if they were low yielders then it might keep them outside regardless of how long they had been milked. Correct, yeah, so we can, if a cow is um, uh, higher in days of milk, we can set it that the gate uh, it doesn't give them as much permission to in into the robot so that you can get more out of your robot and, and not have the cow going in with four, three or four litres of uh, milk or small quantities of milk. So we can do it on expected yield like you saw on the touch screen earlier. Yeah. And we can do it on the, um, uh, on time, uh, expected yield, uh, days in milk. Uh, so we have numerous, any criteria that pops up on our uh, herd management system, we can generally divert a cow on it. Okay. Now the gate is reading the, the cow's ear tag. It looks like the cow manager tag. Yeah, so they have they have um, these cows are two tugs. They have a heat detection system with co manager on uh, on here as well, and we all our ear, ear tags are on the, off the ear, so there's nothing around the cow's neck here. Yeah. So she's got a co manager system uh, uh, that is linked that can as it's a third party software that can link into Delpro and the gates can manage work off that as well. Yeah, so, so the, the ear tag identifier is just a standard EID tag you buy from Mullinahone or Cormac or any one of those. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. Uh, the, the, um, the HDX tag so yeah. it, that you get a standard that works with any calf feeder. So a lot of farmers now have them already. So it, it just helps to re, re, um, it reduces the cost of having a, a neck band around. Yeah, that's an interesting feature about the Delaval system, all right, that you can use your own heat and rumination collars, or you can also team up with the likes of Cow Manager and, and have their software link in with yours. Exactly, yeah, exactly. It means yeah. that it doesn't mean double entering of information by the farmer then if he decides to go that road. Uh, correct, correct, yeah, yeah. So, like, a, and uh, we also have the option of the V310, which is um, um, a testing progesterone of the milk from the robot directly as well. Oh, for so pregnancy? Yeah, for yeah. pregnancy. So, that's there as well as an option as well. All of the uh, gates are air powered then? Yes, that's correct. So they come off the compressor, so um, they're all air powered. Um, in this scenario, we have a pipe coming up underground and uh, uh, supplying the air, so it's all, all compressed air, okay. all with the sensors as well, telling where the goes are. So we can, um, if James or Seamus wants to see um, where a cow is at any particular time, as they pass through a gate, it tells you where they're in A, B, uh, C, or in between an area, and, and it, it'll tell you that at, at a given time. So if you're out, out of the yard, say, and you get an, an alert on your phone that you might have a sick cow, you can just go into the Dell Pro software on your phone and you'll figure out if she's in A, B, or C, or in the shed. Correct. Yeah. So it speeds yeah. up your time to find that sick yeah. cow very quickly. Yeah. Very Cows gathering now, um, like this, when they're very relaxed on, a, say, a robotic system, they tend to kind of loaf around quite a bit. Yeah, yeah it's, um, a it's an important feature to have slats around uh, areas where they where they could tend to loaf, isn't that right? It's correct. Yeah, I think most places um, uh, the slats is advisable, but uh, where the ABC yard is, because it's an area where, uh, at the start up, a farmer thinks there's there's some a lot of cows here. Oh, you know that's not right, but. The cows are nice and relaxed. They'll do it in their own time, yeah. and they know the times that they, that and when they're due to go in. So they'll do it on their own. Yeah, they're all chewing the code quite happy there. Yeah, happy out and not taking no notice of us. Yeah. 
So it looks like we have a, a bit of a queue of cows starting to form now on the roadway. They're making their way towards the, the Graysway gate. Yeah, so it is the one o'clock, just after the one o'clock gate change, so there's a, a good lot of movement on the roadway. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, they're coming up for me. The paddock was open um, from five o'clock this morning and um, the gate changed there at one o'clock and they're going down to B, which was on the new roadway. Straight down the middle here? Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're three eight-hour blocks. We haven't um, divided it unequally at all. But any uh, cow that has a, a right to milk then um, will be diverted into we'll, the robots? Will be diverted into the robots, is right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no problem finding our way through the, the Texas gates? No, um, we actually had a, a, a gate there to kind of funnel them in, uh, the gate on the right-hand side of the Texas gate there to funnel them in, but once they, they had it cracked, we took it away. Um, so she's been drafted left now to go to get milked? Yeah, she's she's milking permission, and I imagine 1613 has milking permission as well, just look at the other one. Huh? This one probably not. Yeah. So uh, for each of the two gates, there's two options, or there's three options for, e for each gate. Um, right, left and centre. So I'd, I think the, we'll say the second cow coming back here, I think she ran the gate, so uh, she might be corrected now. Yeah. yeah. So she's actually, she's skipped her way through the gate the first time, but uh, it caught her on the second round and now it'll send her down to the B block. Exactly, yeah. And even, we'll say, come in, if she came in from the C block and she was only going through one gate and she ran it, the robots will sort it out anyway. Yeah. Um, Excellent. And did you find it hard now to train the cows to uh, kind of come in small groups rather than all at once? Um, it's very weather dependent what happens. So um, a fine day that's not too hot like today, um, they kind of come individually as they need to be milked. On a wet day, they just move at the gate changes, and we'll say if they are past, if they don't have milk permission at the time, they tend to come back then when they are, they have a full order of milk. Um, it's very weather dependent on how the cows behave. To be honest, um, that's what we're that's what we've seen so far. So this is the existing uh, road that was uh, on the farm for the milking parlour, and uh, yeah. all you had to do to transform it into an ABC system was make a, a spur road off here to the, the right? Yeah, yeah, we put in that new road where we reused the gravel from the dig out of the, um, the slatted tank, we'll say, for the new um, the new unit, uh, and it opened up, uh, it is about, uh, is it 29% of the land is uh, accessible through that road within, so that's uh, that's our B, we'll say, this is our A, that's our B, and behind them is our C. Uh, so the gate opens at one o'clock going in there. This is the f five o'clock gate and then going behind is nine o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And how do you find grays out then with the robots when the gates are open continuously and cows are free to come and go as they please? Uh, superb. It was a one thing. I suppose we were pleasantly surprised as we be left by putting it. Um, and when we were uh, trying to figure out why the grays out was so good, um, I suppose the cows aren't going into the paddock as a herd and we'll say dirting the grass in the first grazing when they're grazing the mob. They're grazing individually and well I would think that we'll say they're not dirting the grass so as the cows come into the paddock over the space of eight hours it's still clean for the second and the third grazing. Um, we were, it's incredible all right now when the when the grass has gone to seed and uh, the growth the past two, two to three weeks has been incredible. It has been harder to manage the grazers, it hasn't been excellent. But it was going. To, if we were conventional and the gap was closed, it was going to be that way anyway. So you do have to do a bit more topping, but uh, you have to take the good with the bad in, in the system, you know. Okay. I find with my own system, when you have a split calving system as well, and you've got cows on different stages of the lactation, some of them are happy to stay in the paddocks longer than others, and you know they're effectively doing a lot of yeah. stopping for you. Yeah, the, actually, you know, you say that uh, you'd often see um, late lactation cows uh, that get up, we'll say, when all the freshly cal fresher calf cows have left the paddock, and you just start facing into the clumps. I suppose they maybe try and get get intakes as fast as they can, like, but they do face into the clumps. And if they take the top off them, it's it, it's less dead material. It's going to be left behind after the topper anyway. You yeah. know, the roads are in great condition here and lovely and smooth for the cows' feet. 
Um, how have you found laboring since you've switched over to robotic milking and cows walking at their own pace? Yeah, I suppose at the start we actually did a good bit of lameness, but it was due to the disruption of, we'll say, um, due to the diggy out, it was gravel loosened up. But now that the roadways have bedded in, um, lameness is excellent. And I, I would think, uh, it's just my own opinion, that um, the lameness that sorts itself out an awful lot quicker. Um, because the cows aren't being driven, they're going at their own pace. If they're lame, they can take they can take 20 minutes longer to get to the paddock, they can take 20 minutes longer to come back to the robot. Um, it's just a suspicion, uh, just as something we've noticed that they are they are clearly up that bit quicker, we'll say. Yeah. No dog, no quad chasing cows, they're coming as they please, and if they want to take a break and take a breather, they can. Exactly, yeah, we never had a quad. Um, we do have a dog, he's, he's retired now at this stage. Um, to try to keep him off the road to stop him affecting uh, cow flaws is the, the biggest job with him now. So this is the, the cockpit so of the system, this is where you make all your decisions on say drafting cows or um, you can check on uh, milking permissions, you can see your, your daily yield, you yeah. can see your, your feed rate, you can see your attachments and your failed milkings. Um, is this something that you pay a lot of uh, attention at yeah, every day? Yeah, um, I suppose you look at some of it, you, you don't look at more of it. Um, you obviously look at milk yield per day. Traffic was poor yesterday due to the heat, so our milk yield was down um, a bit. You can see the, the downward trend in the curve there, and you can see the, the green arrows, the milkings per day. So we're averaging um, about 2.23 milkings a day. Um, being complete rate is quite high at the moment. There was um, a problem last night there, there was just a, a liner that was just after slipping off a small bit. But uh, once we got that sorted, um, and I suppose with the incomplete milkings as well, if they have an incomplete milkings, they're drafted back into the shed for another uh, another go at, at being milked, okay. um, which is very, very helpful. And, um, and, and the cow monitor here, say, where you look at the, the health of the cows is quite a useful tool. Yeah, very helpful. Um, so first thing you look at there is the MDI index. Um, so uh, anything above 1.8, I start looking at their individual information. So the yield per quarter and the conductivity of the quarter. So I actually drew that cow this morning. Um, I got an alarm when she came into the robot and drew her. She had a, a, a far higher um, conductivity. She had a conductivity of five in her right rear. So I drew her and she drew perfect. Um, so anything with a conductivity of above five will draw. Um, it's a very nice early warning uh, system. Yeah, it's very it? early warning. Um, I suppose early on the time, we were nearly too early and um, probably used a bit too much antibiotics for uh, uh, unfortunately, it was, it was a bad thing by us. Um, but, uh, you know, we've learned that, you know, they cure themselves if you give them a chance. A um, bit of other mint and they're away, like, you know. It's, a, it's nearly too good at its job, uh, for want of a better wording, like. And I suppose lastly then, as well, you can maybe, you can pull up a feed table here and you can show yeah. us the trend of nuts per, uh, per so, litre. So, um, we have um, we have four different feed tables. Um, so this is the freshly calved one, so this is the only one that's running days in milk. So like I was saying earlier on, they're, um, they get two kilos uh, of a mineral carrier nut standard, and then they're built up a half a kilo a day up to a maximum of eight kilos by day 13. Uh, and then they move on to this feed table, then this is cows greater than 14 days in milk. Um, so that's done uh, on milk yield. So again, they get their two kilos uh, of the mineral carrier. They're fed at uh, a kilo per uh, three liters of milk from 21 to 30. And then from 30 to 45, they're fed at, um, they're fed at a, a feed rate of a kilo per five liters of milk. Well, you can you can tailor that curve to whatever you want as well. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeast. you can tailor to um, milk yield to gra to grass growth, and um, it's very easy um, to tailor. And actually, one feature that I quite like is that if you make a change, um, it highlights what change you've made. So I just make a change, a dummy change there. Um, so it highlights what changes you've made. So when you're um, 
when you go to save, you can double check all uh, all the figures that you have changed. With the, it, it, that's one feature that I I really like with it. So this will be the first port to call every morning just to come out and just uh, check everything. Yeah, going have okay. a look. Um, usually, just look. What I do is I go into the the monitor board first, just see what the traffic is like and what incompletes are like. Um, if they're high, we'll we'll do a bit of cleaning to the camera lens. Might have to turn off a robot just to reset it. Um, it's a bit like fun if you do some drunk turning off and on again, and you're away. Um, funnily enough, it has an awful lot of problems. Yeah and then just check the call monitor. I find the yield very handy as well, like um, especially if a grazing system where dry matter can vary a lot and weather can yeah. vary a lot. Um, you have a lovely steady trend here, you know you're doing something right yeah. then, you know? Yeah, we're and bare yesterday, you know, with the heat, that, that really um, slow traffic because we're very much under pressure now yesterday. Though. But at least you know straight away that there's something that has to yeah. be changed, yeah. uh, whereas if you were in a standard system where you didn't have this data, you wouldn't know until yeah. you saw it in the bulk tank. And that's one thing as well with the robots, you become very good at um, problem solving. It's this has happened. You you know that this has happened, and you you start uh, thinking through why did it happen. Uh, you get very very sharp to that very quickly. Um, I suppose finally as well. I, I know you're not uh, started on it yet, but uh, say for recording of remedies and treatments on cows, um, you'll be able to do that for your entire herd, yeah, we and then will, just yeah. print off a document in for your board B inspection, which would make things a lot more streamlined. Yeah, and even like you're going to be doing it on the computer to make sure cows don't go into the tank anyway. So. Another two or three clicks extra isn't going to be, uh, and it, the book won't build up in. So like it's another, another job done. Yeah, another job done is right, yeah. There you go.